lights on. Welcome, class, to the introduction for the Gassy Lab. Uh, ring that bell. He's really good. Like subscribe. Video so today, by Ken and Rose. Guys, today we're going to pass a mass of gas through a glass up in this class. Damn. Oh, up his what? Up his what? <laughs> so, although, the glass, guys, the glass we're going to use is actually not a glass. It's going to be a plastic uh, graduated cylinder because, uh, frankly, I don't want to use glass in this lab. So we're going to pass a mass of gas through a glass that's actually plastic in glass. And then we're going to find the mass of the gas that we pass through the glass in class. Now, this is what we're going to do. You're going to get this tub of water. You guys are going to love this. Get this tub of water, and we're going to do something called water displacement, which we're going to do a lot this year. Guys, okay, so remember, I had to record fifth period last time because I had to yell at you, and I didn't want to yell at you and put it online, but I did it anyway, and I had to record period five, so I deleted your video. So we're going to put water in this water bath, and we're going to capture some gas in class, and then we're going to find the mass of the gas that we capture in class. So the first thing we're going to do is fill up our water bath with some water, like so. Um, could somebody go back and get a graduated cylinder from me? One of the plastic ones right there? Uh, right, yeah, thank you. So I'm doing this up here on the counter, but one of the re really neat things about these, thank you. I can subscribe. Ring that bell. That bell. Um, one of the neat things about these, these really deep sinks is you can just put the whole tub right into the sink, which I strongly recommend you do. Now, what I want to do is I want to capture some gas from these, uh, these gas canisters. These are provided from Walmart. Walmart has, they sell gas canisters, which is weird. Uh, usually you have to get gas canisters at like a chemical company, but not Walmart. They sell these things. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my gas canister under the graduated cylinder, and I'm going to collect the gas. Make sense? Now, the gas I'm collecting is butane. The gas I'm collecting is butane, which has the formula C4H10. Do you remember? This is on your quiz. Uh, it's going to be on your quiz. Do you remember what, it, what number it has to be greater than or less than to sink in air or rise in air? 16. 29. So if it's more than 29, it's going to sink or rise. It's gonna sink. It's more than 29, it's gonna sink. And uh, butane is four times 12 plus 10, which is 58 grams per mole. So is butane heavier than air or lighter than air? It's heavier than air. So one way I could do it is just kind of go boop and put the air in, in. That's gonna take a long time. So instead, I'm going to put my graduated cylinder underwater, like so, and look. Now I have a column of water. Okay? So I'm going to put my graduated cylinder underwater, like so. Then I'm going to put my gas canister under and bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. Okay? So this is called water displacement. It's called water displacement because I am displacing the water. Make sense? Now, I am now passing my gas through the glass in glass. How might I measure the mass of the gas that I pass through glass and glass? The amount of the But how would I find that? How can I measure that? <laughs> okay, subtract what from what? You subtract it from a like a, a, so subtract what from what? Um, that's going to be tricky um, because our balances. Yeah, I, I don't know any way we can do that. We can like measure the mass of the water and the, the gas on the track. I don't know how to do that. Um, maybe if we had a really, really big graduated cylinder that had like a valve or something we could close, we might be able to do that. What's another way we might measure the mass of the gas passed in class? Andrew? Look at the volume that is the volume of water that is displaced. We're going to use the volume of the water that is displaced to find the volume of gas that we pass through the mass through glass. Um, but uh, I specifically want to know the mass of the gas that I pass with the glass in class. 
I might do that. Well, Bobby's like, doctor suit? Nobody? No. What I want to know is the mass of the butane that I passed through the glass in class. I want to know how much that is. What is the mass of the gas? Gases do have mass, right? Yes. Do gases that are, uh, just by, by um, extension, gases that are more dense than air should be easy to find their mass? What about gases that have less dense than air? Can we do that too? We can do it, but it's harder. All right. Well, let's see. I'm going to try to leave this right here. I've basically added 100 milliliters of gas. I've added gas until the gas pushed the water line to 100 milliliters. So I have the volume of the gas. The volume of the gas is just 100 milliliters, or 0.1 liters. Remember, we're going to use liters in Pivner. You learned about Pivner in the last lab, the ideal gas law, BV equals NRT. Okay. So, so how might I find the mass of the gas that I pass through the glass in class? Oh, you subtract what's in the cylinder? Measure it before and after. Exactly. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to weigh this before I dispense gas and after I dispense gas. Does that make sense? So I'm going to weigh it, I'm going to dispense gas and weigh it again. But here's the crazy thing. This is wet. How do I determine, how do I take into account, because in type, how do I take into account the water on the gas canister? You wipe it off. You can't. One way is to blast it with compressed air. But I don't have enough compressed air for that. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to attempt to weigh the same amount of water each time. Like this. I'm going to get it wet. Then I'm going to hold it at 180 degrees and go. I'm going to do 180 degree flip one time, then weigh it. Then I'm going to dispense my gas and do the exact same thing. Flip, weigh. Now hopefully, if I am consistent, I'll weigh the same amount of water every time. Now, that means don't go on the first time um, and then weigh it, and the second time go, uh, you're like, the mass went up! Because you weren't consistent. If you are consistent, the same person doing the flick the same way every time, you will weigh the same amount of water every time. Make sense? Yes. So from the top, guys, from the top, you're going to get yourself a gas canister, a tub of water, a graduated cylinder, fill your tub of water, put it in your sink, you can share tubs if you need to, and then get your gas canister wet, do the flick, pass gas. Then do the flick, weigh it again. So wet, flick, weigh, pass, flick, weigh, and then move on to the next stage. Okay? You're gonna you're gonna repeat it four times so you have consistent numbers. <laughs> Questions? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the question was, do I need goggles? And the answer is if you or your neighbor are doing this next part, then yes. Now, butane likes to react with oxygen. And butane is heavier than air. So if you're lucky, you can pour out the butane over the water and then light the invisible gas, if you're lucky. Now, that is entirely optional, but kind of fun. So that's why our aim and flames are up here. Okay, so you get your aim and flame ready to go, and then you pour out your butane. Oh! What's up with I actually lit it a little early. You should actually pour it, pour it over the water, and then light the butane up, up at the on the water. I kind of poured it. I lit it a little early. Um, but that, that part's entirely optional. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. It is kind of fun because butane is heavier than air. All right. Questions? It's just like. No, I know. Okay. Do am I correct in assuming there are no questions? Yes. All right. So, uh, can I press the button? So what you're doing? Thank need you. Click the bell. You're going to need 